Welcome back to more Ryan Sirhan. You know that guy who draws people on the subway in New York City? Well, his name is Devon Rodriguez. He's from the Bronx, and he has a pretty crazy story. And we had the honor of having him here at Sirhan House, New York, to be a guest on our Business of Influence podcast. But he's now grown to over 50 million followers across all social media platforms. He's drawn everyone from the person on the subway to the president of the United States of America. You name it, any celebrity, he's drawn them. I want this channel to be about entrepreneurship, not just my story. That'll get boring after a while. But other people's stories, other people's journeys, so that you can take away as much as possible. So here we go. Devon Rodriguez, Business of Influence. How'd you start? Like, how did you get to where you are? Like, how did this all happen? So I, um, I was always into art. I always drew people and I always did people on the subway. And then during the pandemic in August, I was like, I have to get into this TikTok thing because everybody's going viral, all niches. And I was like, I got to, you know, do art. And then I was looking through TikTok and all the art stuff that I saw was like kind of cringy. And I was like, I got to come up with like a original format that's not that. Anyway, so I tried so many things for a month. After a month, I hit, I got this idea where I'm going to draw people and hand them the drawing. And then first one was like 5 million. And I was like, you know, once, once I got that one, if I do the second one and it's viral, then it's rinse and repeat and like it's going to the moon, hopefully. And then um, I got the second one, it got 21 million. And I, I knew like it was just a matter of time. It's just like, just keep doing it. And then after two weeks, it was at a million. And I was like knocking on my grandma's door. I lived in the Bronx with my grandma and I'm like, grandma, life is changing. Like, trust me, just wait like a couple months. It's just a matter of time. Like pure math is going to go there. Dude, like that, crazy. your story is crazy, dude. And I love to even go even like further back from that, dude. Cause I read that you got into it a little bit by like getting into graffiti a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. Like high school, like you went to a regular high school and then try to get into a, yeah. In our high school. Yeah. 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 Can you t tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, I was always into art ever since I was a kid. You know, I used to, I grew up in the South Bronx, so I used to like walk the streets with my mom. And then I yeah. used to always be looking at the graffiti like, mom, can you read that? And she's like, no, I don't know what that is. But I always <laughs> knew what it said. I was like, oh, I love the colors. And I, I was just always into art. And my peers in school, um, I always gravitated to the kids that drew. But the kids in school that drew, I never met a kid that like drew realism or anything like that. Everybody did graffiti. So I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. So I just started doing graffiti. They would teach me about like the cans and I would spray paint the walls and then I got arrested when I was um 14 and I was like you know what maybe I shouldn't be doing this <laughs> and then um so I applied for the high school of art and design in Midtown but they wanted like portraits and figures and um v variety of media and I didn't even know what that meant at the time <laughs> and they wanted 10 pieces and me in the Bronx, everybody told me like, you're such a great artist so um I'm like I'm great I'm gonna do my portfolio last minute and then I turned it in and I got declined and then had to go to Samuel Gompers, which was like one of the worst high schools in the Bronx. Um, it got shut down because there was just like, the graduation rate was horrible, like yeah. violence, gang stuff. Like the stuff that I saw in that school was crazy. Like it got shut down? Was yeah, it got shut down. Yeah. Damn. Like I think five schools got shut down that year. Did you, did you graduate from it or no? No, so I had a high school art teacher there and I told him like, yo, I don't want to be here. Like, this is crazy. Like, because it was my zone school. I'm like, I don't want to be here. Like, you know, I grew up in the Bronx, but I always try to like look outside of it and try to succeed in Manhattan. And then he told me like, you can only get accepted into art and design as a ninth grader or a 10th grader. So he helped me rebuild the portfolio. I applied for art and design again, got in and I came in as a 10th grader and then, um, then from there, I had a chip on my shoulder. So I was very competitive with like all the kids in the school. I was like, oh, like you guys didn't accept me. I'm going to outdo everybody. So I was just like super dedicated. And that was James Hopper. Is that the? Oh, um, Jeremy Harper, yeah. Jeremy Harper. Yeah. Right, that was the teacher's name, right? Yeah. Crazy. And he's the guy, if I correct me if I'm wrong, he's the guy who was like drawing people on the subway. And yeah. that's kind of how you got introduced to that concept. Yeah. So I was so mad that I was in that school. Like... You know, in the locker room, I would see, so there was cameras all over the school. Even to get inside the school, we had to wait like 30 minutes because everybody was getting metal detected because yeah. for weapons and stuff. So um, I would see kids like slam each other on their necks, like full bloody face. Like they would like really, like that school was insane. So I was so mad to be in that school. Jesus. But then the blessing that I had was Jeremy Harper 
would show me how to draw people on the subway. And this was 2010. That didn't affect me until 2020. And like, I was like, let me use that idea for TikTok. And it went super viral. So yeah. I'm glad I didn't get accepted from the beginning because none of this would have ever happened. That's, so everything happens for a reason. Really. Yeah. Your yeah. parents, were they like artistic at all? Like, how did you, like, where did that come from? That like creative bug, I guess. Um, so my dad was a tattoo artist, but he left when I was like three years old. So I never really had a dad, but I guess the gene, I don't know if the gene, cause I was always interested in art, whether it was um, like when I was five years old, I wasn't thinking about an art career. I was just like, I want to draw and I would draw all day. And that's all I cared about. And so I guess maybe there's a gene, maybe not cause he wasn't there, but no idea. Are your, are your tattoos, your drawings? Oh no, these are, um, I'm really into like Japanese tattoos. So I yeah. just got some. Yeah, I don't know how to draw any of this. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many tattoos do you have? Oh, I have like my sleeves and then I just got these two and then I got my whole back. But I think I'm retired from getting, I already have more than enough. <laughs> Since I met you, dude, you've got like right? so many more additions. It's crazy. Adrian, you should get like a chair tattooed on your neck. Funny you say that. What? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not, <laughs> like not going like like to do couch. that. I heart furniture. Yeah. I heart trash. There you go. <laughs> yes. That's the move. Um, so 2020 happens, bro. You're watching Charlie D'Amelio do her thing. <laughs> what was the inkling? Was it just like you saw the success and wanted a piece of it? Or were you just like bored and like, let me try this TikTok thing out? I saw the success and I wanted a huge chunk of it. <laughs> I was just yeah, like... You seem competitive. Yeah. I was just like, how the hell are these... 16 year old kids not anybody in particular but how are these 16 year old kids like dancing and making all this money and becoming famous and i was like you know what once i post my paintings um it's gonna take off and then i posted it and it was like 100 views and i was like oh wait a minute i gotta do some research so i watched like every podcast about the algorithm i would listen to every while i was painting i would listen to everything and you know we'll talk about having a good hook and like the incentive to like stay on the video and then just watch time all of that and so that like inspired me to write out like a format you know yeah. to like keep people intrigued and somehow make it art digestible for people because most people don't care about art you know so how to make it about like relatable the, yeah relatable like the shock value of drawing somebody on the spot like that and like the emotional value of their reaction yeah and then yeah just to make it like easier for people to consume that's pretty crazy that you had that like insight or like that foresight as somebody who's just like an artist and like all you cared about was art to be able to like look at this and be like oh well there's all these other things that like go into like making a successful video or did you or is that kind of something you learned yeah. during the process of i learned it from like doing research and um there was this girl who's my girlfriend now <laughs> i won oh. but, <laughs> so oh. my girlfriend now her name is sophia aljabori she was doing these tiktoks of painting people and she had like 500,000 followers and she kept telling me like, you need to join TikTok. You need to join. And you met I, your girlfriend on TikTok? I met her on Instagram, but, but she inspired. She was like, you have to. So I was like, okay. And then when I saw her views, I was like, okay, this is, it wasn't like that cringe art that I saw. It was mm. like portraits. So how many pieces of content do you put out now? Like a month, do you think? How do you think about your I content do, schedule? Yeah, I do like one a day. One a day. Yeah, yeah. So I do. Um, You're doing a drawing every day. Yeah. I'm putting out every day. Yeah, yeah. Every single day. Yeah. Across platforms or TikTok is still your main go to? TikTok is like the main one just because that's where it started. But um I just like put them everywhere. YouTube yeah. Shorts, Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels. You do a pretty good job too, because like you repurpose content in a really smart way. Where it's like you've seen that drawing before, but you package it in a different way where it's like maybe there's a handful of people that are like have interesting reactions. You're like, oh, here are my favorite reactions. Oh yeah. So I think that's really smart. And if anybody was like watching and like, that's how you really maximize content. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know where I knew what you were doing was was crazy? <laughs> when you put out the video of of us. Yeah. Um, and someone stopped me on the street and they're like, dude, you're the guy. I'm like, yeah, I'm the realist. Yeah, you know, yeah. million dollar listing, real estate guy, whatever. And they're like, uh, and it, it, that's usually what people say. And you're like, yo, Devon Rodriguez, he drew you. <laughs> Yeah. You take the subway? Yeah. And I was like, hold the phone. <laughs> That's how you know me? Like, yeah. And then someone else said the same thing. I'm like, what the fuck is happening in my life? Dude. I went, people used to know me from another place. Now they know me because I was riding the subway one day and you drew me. That's Selfishly crazy. too, I remember going through your analytics. I remember like, 
you have this like it's like a slow rise of followers right and then out of nowhere there's just like this massive spike and we're like where did that come from and then we're like we oh, yeah. track down the date and it was the day that you put out your video i'm like oh this is interesting like, it was that bronx kid that kid from <laughs> the bronx dude that's crazy i didn't even know that that's, that's well yeah it's that's, wild it is crazy so how do you how do you make money oh mostly brand deals which i didn't even get into it for that just one day i get a brand deal and i was like what the hell like so someone dms you and they're like how much for you to draw a what like what was the first one yeah how do you integrate it in like your content um so the first one was hot cheetos they were like oh can you draw this um the cheetos guy like the leopard or whatever that is and and um and just post it on tiktok and we'll give you 10 grand and i'm like in my room i'm like what? Like, I didn't even know you were allowed to negotiate or I didn't even know what. I'm like, You're like yes, yes, I'm yeah. like, yes, 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 of course. I drew it like day of and posted it and they, I got the money. I was like, what the hell is this? And then um, the second one was um, extra gum. They were like, oh, come up with an idea to incorporate extra gum. So um, I took the, I took the gum. I had it on my lap on the subway. I opened it, um, pulled out the gum and then drew on the wrapper, the person in front of me. And then yeah, I, I and then one. I put the wrapper back in. I was like, oh, um, here's extra gum. There's a gift inside and they saw the drawing. So I try to find like creative ways to yeah. integrate. Um, yeah. Like the brand. So no. now, now you do negotiate. Now you're negotiating. Now you have yeah. now UTA signed you, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so now I have UTA. They negotiate. I don't even know how to do that. I'm, I'm too. Um, Let the professionals. Do yeah, that, right? yeah. I don't even want to deal with that. But then they come to me like, oh, we got this for you. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Right, you're drawing. You're out there. You got a brand dealer too. And then all of a sudden you're drawing celebrity after celebrity after celebrity. Yeah. So how did that start happening? Just randomly, I would get emails like, hey, we're doing a campaign for this guy's music. Would you like to draw him on this? And I'm like, what the hell? Like, they would even get on the subway? Like, I don't know, just rent, like Ed Sheeran, for example. I'm like, wow, he really, or Jared Leto. They'll join in on me on the subway. And I'm just like, wow, it's like, it got to that level. Like, just by posting every single day. Like, I just had one idea. I had one idea and it still like feeds my every day. What you know? was the one celebrity that you're like, no fucking way this is like happening. This is real life. Probably Joe Biden. <laughs> oh, I guess. Yeah, probably Joe Biden. <laughs> if he's a celebrity. Obviously, who, Ryan was who the answer that How does, how does you drawing Joe Biden happen? Who who reached out to you from the White House? Like who, so, is it an email? Is it a deal? Like Joe Biden didn't just slip into your DMs. You get that email. It's like at whitehouse.gov. No, I just got a text. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Joe Biden. laughs> hey, this is Joe. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, so my agency, UTA, shout yeah. out to them. They, um, he has this bit where a water bottle just comes out of nowhere. Oh, Don't nice. worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, they were like, oh, we have a collab for you, but like the deal is not fully settled. So we don't want to get you excited and we'll let you know when, it, when it's like more um, finalized. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I didn't really care because at that point I already did like 30 celebrities. And I was like, all right, well, whoever it is, whatever, let me know. And then um, like a month later, he calls me and he's like, hey, so are you busy Saturday? Cause we have, we got the collab. You're going to do a TikTok with president Joe Biden. And I was like, wait, who, what Joe, what Joe Biden? Like, that's crazy. I was, he was like, are you free Saturday? I'm like, of course I am. I'll cancel anything. Like, of course. And then, um, so they flew me out to this rally in Florida and then, um, yeah, we got to meet and yeah, he, he was, he was so nice and had to go through all this secret service and, yeah, it was a, it was just a Puerto Rican kid from the Bronx. Yep, it, was, it, it was, yeah, it was hectic. It was, yeah. All right, I hope you enjoyed watching that clip. I think this episode of Business of Influence was one of the coolest ones we've done. It's such a, it's such a real organic, intense story. And it's young, you know, he's still going. It's only been a couple of years. Imagine where he's going to be in 10 years, 20 years. I mean, who even knows? He might be doing drawings on the moon with Elon in the houses that they just said they're going to be building on the moon. Like relatively soon. Anyway, like, subscribe to more Ryan Serhan. I love you all. See you in the next one.